Hey everybody, Paul with Cichlid Nirvana here, and this is the third part of my video series talking about um, cycling your aquarium. So, in this video, I want to talk about my experiences, mistakes I made, things that I ran into while I was cycling uh, two of my aquariums. Um, my 75-gallon Embuda tank and my, my 30-gallon uh, tank that I'm going to use. Uh, also to house Mbuna or as a quarantine tank maybe as necessary. So what I did is I went out and found a dollar per gallon sale and purchased um, these aquariums and the one behind me here, uh, the 10 gallon behind me, um, and brought them home and didn't have stands or anything like that for them. So I decided, you know, I'd start getting filtration and I would start building a stand for my 75 because I wanted to build that myself. So what I did is I found a place in my basement to set up the 75 gallon aquarium and uh, ordered a Fluval 406 canister filter and uh, an AquaClear 110 hang on back filter and put the media in and was going to start establishing that bacteria. I'm going to seed the tank with ammonia. Um, what I used to seed the tank was Dr. Tim's ammonia. I found it on Amazon for a couple bucks um, and it has instructions for so many drops uh, to reach two parts per million. You put so many drops in uh, per or for each 10 gallons and or for each gallon and I found that uh, that's what I use the entire time to seed my aquariums for ammonia uh, during my fishless cycle and I found it to be kind of a pain. It was a lot of drops I think if I had it to do all over again, I would go find ammonia with no a non-scented, 100% ammonia with no surfactants that didn't foam when you when I shook it. That's the way I would go, and then kind of test, put some in, kind of look online to see what people recommend for every 10 gallons, how much ammonia to put in, and then test it to try to get up to four to five parts per million. That's the way I would approach it now if I had to do it all over again because it would be, I don't know, the Dr. Tim stuff is cheap but it was just kind of a pain to count out the drops. And it always seemed to get the levels to where I needed it. Needed it. I had to put substantially more than what they recommended. So, I don't know. I just figured I would rather do, um, do it the other way. But anyway, I seeded the aquarium and I proceeded to buy other things for my tank and uh, build my stand. So, I also decided um, then very soon that I would try Dr. Tim's one and only, which was is supposed to be live nitrifying bacteria and it was pretty expensive and so I thought hey this seems like a good way to seed my aquarium so what I did is I I got that shook it up put the whole works in I didn't have any substrate didn't have anything in the aquarium and I started try to start my cycle that way and I tested and I tested and I tested and I had zero change in ammonia, um, no rise in nitrites. Um, I think maybe maybe I had a slight rise in nitrites. There might have been something in that bottle uh, to help establish the bacteria, but man, not near enough for me to put fish in, not near the instant cycle that they claim to be. Um, and so I let it keep going. I worked on my aquarium and then decided after watching some more videos, I wanted to make some changes. Changes happened to my setup a lot through this process. So um, I decided, okay, um, I, kept, I kept doing this. And I never had to add ammonia to the aquarium. Well, well I take that back. While it was downstairs while, while I was building it, this probably took uh, about a week to a week and a half to get my stand fully built and, and ready to go. And in that time then, since the Dr. Tim's one and only didn't work, I researched, because I'm an impatient guy, I researched other forms of uh, uh, live nitrifying bacteria, and, and based on reviews, I went with Tetra Safe Start. And I dumped a bottle of that in, uh, the big bottle of that in, to the aquarium to try to help. Um, at this point, um, the, the cycle started happening more and more, there were more nitrates in the um, or nitrites, I'm sorry, in the aquarium, and, I, and the level started to get really high, and I wanted to um, get them lower. Now, 
I had read at that point, don't do any water changes. So I had never done a water change. Um, I was afraid that I would take that live nitrifying bacteria out. Um, turns out, I think some people will say absolutely none of it can live in the water column or, or will be in the water. I think it'll establish itself in your filter or in your substrate, but I think some can be in the water, but that's not where the majority of it's going to be in. It's not something that you should worry about. So I um, had not done any water changes and didn't through this process. That's one thing I would have changed because could have brought those nitrite levels down a little bit. They had to be, they were really, really high. So I added the uh, Tetra Safe Start. And, you know, it had a little bit of impact, but not a lot. And what I would say is it maybe would have an impact for a day when I do that. And then as the aquarium was being seeded, it would just establish, the levels would be off the charts again the next day. Like uh, the bacteria wouldn't last. I don't know how to describe it, but it didn't really work uh, as advertised. Um, so I kept building the stand and we got the stand put up uh, in our living room upstairs and got everything carried up and set up up there. And I continued testing I continued doing things up there. I didn't learn my lesson and got another bottle, a big bottle of Tetra Safe Start, and dumped that in. And it did the same thing every time where it would seem like it was working, like it did its job, but then the levels would build right back up and um, like the bacteria wouldn't make, wouldn't survive. I don't know. Um, and that didn't work. And we kept trying and trying and trying and trying. I tested three times a day. I think I was obsessed with it. Um, just waiting for those levels to come down and I kept adding ammonia as the ammonia levels dropped so I wouldn't lose, um, so I wouldn't kill my uh, nitrosomonas bacteria. And then I went to, at this stage when I went upstairs, I will add that I had switched to, I had switched to, uh, I took the Aquaclear 110 off the aquarium a lot of people have good things to say about those, so I might have just got a dud, but mine really rattled and made a lot of noise. I tried some different fixes. One is you, you put some Vaseline on the impeller magnet uh, where the, the magnet attaches or where the impeller slides on, and, and that will help. And it did for a little bit and then stopped, but I thought that was ridiculous. So um, that went back, and so all that media was gone. So... I had some problems with my cycle as far as the length of time, or it seemed like I killed it. Eh, partially my fault. I took the media from that and put it in uh, my fluval. I tried to keep that media, but you know I probably shouldn't have have made that change. Um, and when I took the aquarium upstairs, I did. There was no substrate in it or anything, so I was hoping that I left water aquarium water in the filter so I could keep that bacteria alive and then just drain the aquarium and carried it up. So that should have been okay. Um, but then because I was getting rid of one uh, one type of filtration, I wanted another and I just bit the bullet. I saw a sale on Amazon and built, bit the bullet and bought a second Fluvofork 06, which is a ton of filtration in a 75-gallon tank to have two Fluval 406 canister filters. But that's what I did. At this time, I was watching um, Richard on Pond Guru talk about um, the nitrogen cycle, and it was the first time that I had heard the last stage where anaerobic bacteria can develop to help reduce your nitrate levels, and he was talking about his Biohome Ultimate um, media, filter media. Um, and what he said made complete sense. So I just had the Fluval standard filter media in my canisters. So what did I do but turn around and um, order Biohome Ultimate and I reestablish my my canisters with that. Um, and I tried to rinse things off into it and, and do things like that, but I was done. I probably completely killed the cycle. At this point, I added substrate and things, um, which was I think a mistake that I made. When we set the aquarium up upstairs, I added substrate and uh, rocks and things like that into the aquarium. And uh, so at this point, I had Biohome Ultimate in there. I um, 
hat and then was running the aquarium. And when I did that, I ordered Tetra Safe Start for the third time, a big bottle of it. This time when I put it in, um, it was different. When I dumped it into the aquarium, there was a worm or something inside of it. And I don't know if they, if that's supposed to be in every bottle or if where they're trying to grow this bacteria, they have that for decomposition to produce ammonia to keep the bacteria alive. But the bacteria in that bottle was good. It, it was almost like an instant cycle where... Um, I added the ammonia, and even though I had all new media and stuff like that, it cycled the aquarium really quick, where, where the ammonia was gone. Now I had a nitrite spike, but the ammonia was gone, and so it was like there was a lot of good nitrosomonas bacteria in that bottle. Not a lot of good um, nitrobacter. So um, then I'm, I was sitting with super high nitrite you know, zero parts per million ammonia until I added it. And it at this point, within 24 hours, it was completely removing all that ammonia. Five parts per million, gone. Cycling over. So while this is establishing, I took my 30-gallon tank and had it set up with the AquaClear 110 on it. I could not stand the rattle. At this point, I hadn't returned it yet. I couldn't stand the rattle, so that went. And I ordered a Cascade 1000, which is, again, lots of filtration for a 29-gallon aquarium, but... I liked the canister filters, so I went with a little bit less expensive option and put a Cascade 1000 on there, and that then got the BioHome Ultimate Media. Um, I think my my filters have, on the Fluvo 406s, there's the really coarse media on the side, and then um, on this side is the really coarse media, and then here, whatever, it's mirrored, so I'm struggling here. But it's you've got the coarse media on the side, then you've got a medium foam media that can help, you know, filters things out and can have some biological um, filtration. And then I have two full trays of BioHome Ultimate. And then I have, um, at this point, I had polishing pads. So, or polyester filling is what I use for polishing pads. So I, I had polyester filling in the, in the filter and no uh, chemical filtration. I don't use carbon unless, you know, for some reason I would have to medicate. But um, both canister filters were set up were set up the same way. The Cascade set up the same way. Um, I forget it might have one less tray, but same premise. Um, so I was waiting, and it took a long, 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 long time for the nitrites to start coming down. So here I was sitting, testing every day, thinking it was never going to happen. The nitrites were just going to stay. Um, so. I'm at about, it looks like I'm at about 13 minutes in this video. So I think that this is maybe the halfway part of my fish list cycling process. And so um, in summary, you know, kind of started, I tried the, the biological filtration or the, the biological live nitrifying bacteria was hit and miss with it. Like I said, one jug, one thing of TetraSafe smart start worked um, pretty good, but the other one not so great. So I think maybe um, I'll have I'll add another part to this series because this video is getting pretty long, and uh, then in the last part I'll finish up with how my cycle ended up and um, some other things that I learned through the process and products and stuff that I use. So. Um, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I will catch you um, in the next part of this series.